G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're covering the second part of my Revit feasibility study series. Um, if you watched my last video, you'll see it was quite long. Um, feasibility is a complex topic to cover, um, so this will probably also be a long video, so hopefully you stick with it, uh, and hopefully you learn a little bit about building massing today in Revit. So we've covered site controls, and we're going to cover a whole bunch of techniques in Revit first, and then we're going to go through some techniques in Dynamo after that to an analyze our site and our building. And then we'll look at Power BI at the end, so how to report our findings. So we've got a few types of massing studies we can undertake. The one we're going to do today is just a site maximization study. So filling out the site entirely and testing a, a level distribution across that site. Um, you can also do test fits as well. So trying to fit a particular building shape within a site. You can do form finding. So just playing with forms and experimenting within the volume that you're, you're bound within. And also adding and subtracting voids and solids from each other. But we're, we're going to just work with a basic maximization today. So you remember in the last part, we actually made our site control mass and we're going to fill that. So um, there's some variables we're going to work with today. So one is that we're going to try and fill out our frontage zone. So we're going to maximize that first 45 meter zone and we're going to fill it out with a commercial program and we're going to do the remainder as residential. We'll probably do that in the next part, but today that's what we're aiming towards. And we're going to, we're going to try and maximize our lobby height uh, in respect to those parameters. We're also going to uh, treat our commercial as four meters floor to floor and our residential as 3.1 meters. And then we're going to consider our basement later because it won't contribute towards our GFA, um, which I'll cover shortly. So the workflow is that we're going to set up some control levels. So these aren't the building levels. These are the levels which will control the massing. And then we're going to set up the building levels from there. And we're also going to set up just some design options and some framework. And we're going to cover design options in our next part in more detail. And we're also going to add mass floors by level in this, this part of the series as well. And we're going to calculate the maximum FSR, which I'll cover shortly. Um, but we're going to calculate it as an unconverted number. Uh, and I'll also explain what that means as well. So feasibility is a bit of a fine art. Um, we're not going to work too thoroughly because usually it takes a lot of time and a lot of experience to do a proper full feasibility study of a site. You almost need to know how to do it before you do it. Um, but I'm not going to go into too much detail. So try not to uh, face palm too hard if I make some silly assumptions about the site or if I make a, an error or I don't maximize the site potential. Um, chances are I probably will make some of those mistakes because I'm rushing. Um, so I won't try and cover this fine art process. That's really something I can't teach you through Revit and experience. So I mentioned FSR. Um, so for those that don't work in Australia or Sydney specifically, you probably don't know what FSR is. You may, depending where you are and what terminology your council uses or your city. Um, but basically it's an area or a form control system that is at least in use in Sydney, as far as I know. Um, and it's basically the gross floor area of your overall site divided by your site area. So you can see in this building on the right, it's got four floor plates that are evenly distributed to the site area. So its FSR would be one to one. And essentially this ratio is used to limit how much uh, mass a building can contain um, in addition to setback controls and height limits. And it can make it quite challenging to do a feasibility study. So I also mentioned GFA or gross floor area, which is an area measurement system, which FSR uses. Um, it's typically less than the gross building area, which the mass will determine. Um, it typically includes habited areas and it's measured from the internal face of external wall systems. So the inside of a glass line, for example, um, and it excludes some, such areas as basements, lifts, stairs and store areas. Um, and also balconies and terraces lower than 1.4 meters and car parks uh, that are required by council. Um, any additional car parking does count towards GFA in Sydney. <clears throat> so basically we're gonna be working today with a mass that represents the GBA of our building or the gross building area. Um, but we'll be deriving this into gross floor area in part four uh, by working with ratios on our mass floors to estimate our gross floor area instead. So it's a bit of a, a push and pull process feasibility. You sort of work with a form and you keep getting numbers and you keep pushing and pulling your mass until basically the program you desire fits within the GFA and the FSR of your site. Um, but we're not gonna do too much of that. Anyway, without further ado, let's actually get started with building massing. Um, I've been talking too long. So we're just gonna go back to our Revit model. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually just set up an, another part of our design option. So at the moment we have a full site and a half site control. What I actually wanna do now is I wanna set up an option called off. And I'm gonna make this my primary option. Uh, so I'll just finish editing and I'll make primary. 
So basically by default, my planning controls will be off. So if it, under my design option settings, I say automatic, I don't see my planning control. This way we actually call on our planning control mass to show up when we need it. Um, but the next thing I'm gonna do is actually set up some design options as well, um, just to control our mass. So in this case, our primary, this, this is gonna be option, option one, and this will just contain all our full site explorations. And then within that, we'll just have off as our primary, because we're gonna have other design studies and we'll cover this in more detail in my next part. I'm just setting up the infrastructure for it. And for now, we'll only have one option, which is 1A and we'll call this maximize. So that's our target in this particular study. And then we'll make another option set and we'll just call this option two, half site. So we could contain a lot of sub options within here. So we can cover different mixes, for example. So say we wanted to do a residential podium and a commercial tower or a commercial tower and a residential podium. We need to separate these using design options. But in this case, we're just dealing with two maximization options today. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll just duplicate our working view here. And we'll just call this, uh, we'll call this 1A. And this will become our working view um, for exploring this particular option. So what we need to do is go in our visibility graphic settings and we need to override our option one to maximize instead of off. And we'll keep our full site controls on for now. Likewise, we'll duplicate our half site controls view. And in this case, we'll call this one two A. And by default, our primary option for full site will be set to off. So all we'll see is the two A option in this case. So that's how we can sort of keep our main options separate from one another. Um, and I'll also just generate a floor plan. This is so I can draw my mass within this view. So again, I'll just call this one A and I'll call my half site option two A. So it's good that we sort of had these views set up in the last in the last um, tutorial. It makes it a lot, a lot easier to move forward. Um, I always recommend trying to make views uh, wherever possible that let you sort of work within them. Try not to use your documentation views as your working views if possible. Cool. Okay, so now we have a plan and a 3D that we can work in. So the next thing we need to do is actually set up control levels for our mass. So I'm just going to go back into my annotation category settings and turn on the levels. So you recall that we had two levels in our previous previous tutorial. I'll just unlock this view. So what we need to do is actually maximize the extent of our levels to our site. So we're just going to ignore datum for now. But what we're going to do is just make the extent of our, our ground floor a little bit bigger. So the great thing about Revit 2019 is now you can see levels in 3D and it's really easy to change the extent of levels. So I'll just click and drag and we can make our levels go past our building if we need. Keep in mind you're actually editing the 3D extents of your level when you do this. So this will affect other views potentially, um, but because we're doing a feasibility study, it's not too important. So we have our ground floor, but what we want now is control levels for our mass. So essentially we're gonna have two key controls in addition to our ground floor. So the first one we're gonna have in this case for option 1A is we're gonna have our frontage height where we terminate uh, the first profile of our building and then our, our profile for the top of our building. So at the moment, we'll just line those up to, to those heights using our align tool. And we're gonna call these, um, we'll call this, uh, we'll, call it, um, we'll call it 1A control one and 1A control two, just so we can tell what is special about these levels. Now, the problem with this is that if I go into my option two, um, we'll actually be able to see those levels in our design option views elsewhere, which isn't ideal. So you see that, you know, these don't really want to relate to option two. So what we need to do is set up some filters to hide our levels, because I don't believe you can add levels to design options. Well, you can now. Okay, that could be interesting. I'll just cross check if you can actually do that. I wasn't sure if you are able to do that. No, you can't. So it says none of the selected options can be added to the option set. It's a bit cruel because Revit makes it look like it's going to let you do it and then it doesn't. So what we're going to do is set up some filters. So in this case, we want to set up a filter that will show only ground floor and the planning controls for option 1A. So we're going to make a filter. We'll just make a new filter and we'll just call this one um, levels uh, 1A. We're going to apply it to levels. And so we're going to say that the name 
Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll actually we'll make some grid types first. So what I'm going to do is just select these two grids, and I'm going to duplicate their type. And I'm just going to call their type um, option 1A. And likewise, I'm just going to rename my grounds to uh, ground. That way our levels are clearly typed. And then from there, we can make filters to isolate. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that the grids have to be equal to two conditions to be hidden. So we're going to say that one condition is that the type name of the grid does not equal ground. But in addition to that, we're going to say the type name does not, uh, we'll do, does not begin with, and we'll say, I believe, oh, actually we'll say it does not end with 1A. That way we can change the front end of our grid of our level if we want to. Okay, so what we'll do is just okay that. And now what I'll do is I'll just add that filter to my view. And if I turn this off, nothing should happen to begin with. But what we're gonna do is just create some control levels for option two as well. So we're gonna copy those in place and we're gonna call those new levels option 2A. But you'll see now they're hidden because our filter's catching them. So what we need to do here is actually apply another type of filter to this option 2A. So we're going to duplicate our levels 1A filter and we'll rename it. And we'll just change the 1A to 2A. So essentially it's going to hide everything except for ground and the levels for 2A. So that's how we can sort of keep our levels for our design options separated. So I'll just go into my filters and I'll just add that filter and turn those those levels that don't meet the criteria off. So now we've just got the levels for option 2A in this view. So we can obviously rename these as well to 2A for control 1. And we'll just call this control 2. Okay, so we have the infrastructure to begin our mass at this point. So I'll just jump into 1A and we're just going to start our building massing. So at this point, uh, we can go into our design option. So in this case, we're going to go into 1A maximize. And the great thing about design options is they isolate your working plan. You don't have to worry about selecting other things by accident, unless you tick off this active only box, which lets you go outside your design option. But whilst I'm in here, I can't select these things, which is great. So we're gonna make a mass. So we're gonna go uh, model in place, mass. And we're just gonna call this option 1A. Okay, so immediately we're in the conceptual massing environment. So I'm not going to cover too many things about conceptual massing here. I'm just going to teach you how to build a basic mass using lines and extrusions uh, because it works a little bit differently to a family. So we're going to set our work plan up here and we're going to set our work plan to ground floor and we'll just open up our site view as well and we'll just do a window tile and we'll just hide everything except for our plan and our 3D. That way we've got both of them available at the same time to work in. So we've got our plan and our 3D. So we set our drawing plane to ground floor. We're going to draw some model lines first. And we're just going to make sure we're drawing on work plane, not on face. And because we've got a plan open, we can draw in that instead. So much easier. So I'm just going to zoom in and just start tracing my property boundary. And I'll just make sure I trace my, my setback line versus the, the entire property boundary itself because we want to make our form respective to our setbacks. Okay, so what we should have now is basically an outline of model lines. And what you can do from there is just go up to create form and you just go solid form. And the create form tool is context sensitive. Depending on what you select, it will generate different types of forms. So if I selected that plus a path, for example, or a line, it would ask me to make a sweep. And you'll see that now we have a mass here that we can basically constrain the top and the bottom of. And what we're gonna constrain them to is ground floor and those control levels. So I'm just gonna constrain the top of this to this control level. And the great thing about this is that regardless of my, my height limit or my, my, my zone limit, um, what I can actually do now is turn off my, my planning controls in this view. And you'll see that I'm left behind with this mass. But if I reduce this level, you'll see that it drags my 
It drags my mass with it. So these are connected. So this gives you a way to control your mass without having to go inside your mass and manually move everything around. I find this is the best system to control massing elements to associate everything to a level or a reference plane, but I prefer a level. Okay, so we're gonna go back in and just finish off our mass. So we'll just go back in and edit in place. Okay, and now we're gonna set our drawing plane to the control plane for 1A, so this mid plane, but we'll just keep drawing in this view. So we're gonna draw a model line on work plane, and now we're drawing our upper profile. So we're basically just tracing this here. So you can see because we have our side controls, it's really easy to set up this mass. Okay, so I'll go on here. It looks like it's drawn on the ground floor still. So we'll just, we'll set the host to 1A control one. I think because I drew in this, this plan, it tries to draw it back down on the ground plane, but it's really easy to change the host of these elements in the massing environment. And we'll just create form again. And I'll just drag this up a little bit and then I'll just drag, grab the bottom of that by tabbing until I get the face and I'll just push that up because this isn't constrained yet. But again, if I just use the align tool and I lock, everything becomes constrained in that mass. So that's pretty much my base mass setup. Obviously I can do the same for my half site as well. So because I've set up these views, it's really easy. So I just go and open up the floor plan for these ones. And it's the same process essentially. I won't do it this time around, but that's pretty much the same environment you do it in just by creating a new mass in this particular design option. For now, we'll just focus on option 1A. So the next thing we need to do is actually generate mass floors, but the first thing we need to do to do that is generate our building levels. So at this point, um, usually I recommend creating another, another view just for, in general, the site. And we might actually just take one of our views that we've customized a little bit for one of our options. And what we'll do is we'll just change our design options so that we're turning off our full site. And we'll just disable our filters. Actually, before we do that, we'll create a special building level type. So I'm just gonna create one level and I'm gonna call this uh, building level. Because we wanna be able to hide these building levels typically. Okay, and immediately it will hide because the filter is saying you don't belong to the criteria. So at this point, we can basically create a new filter. So we'll go edit new and we'll duplicate this and we'll call this levels and building. So we'll say that it does not equal ground or the type name does not equal building level. And we'll add that filter instead. I might do a tutorial on filters later on. So if I'm going a little bit too fast through filters, don't worry, I will cover those in more detail in another video, I think. And we're gonna rename our ground floor because we know our ground floor is a lobby. Lobby slash retail. We'll, we'll program some retail into this in a later video. And we won't rename all the other views. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll just take a nominal offset from the ground floor for our lobby. We'll just say eight meters for now quite a generous lobby. And we'll just call this uh, level 01. Okay, so at this point we can start generating our commercial levels. So we basically know that we can go up to about 45 meters above this level. So at this point we can say that we're sitting at, I think 73 meters at the moment. So if I just get my calculator out and I go uh, 70, actually we'll do, We've used up eight meters of our 45. So we'll do 37 meters uh, divided by four meters, which is our commercial floor to floor. So we can fit about nine levels of commercial within our height limit that we're trying to maximize. So I'm gonna use my array tool. So I'm just gonna go into right mode. So I'm looking side on to my view and I'm just gonna array and I'm gonna just make, I'll make eight floors and I'll move it to the second one. Okay, so we're just gonna go up four meters and this should create an array of commercial levels and I believe it looks like we may have room for one more floor so I might just go and add one more in there okay so 101 so we have to go up to 105 and we may have room for another floor again actually but at the moment it comes down to whether we want to maximize our blobby a little bit more um, at the moment, eight meters is decent for a lobby height, but I might just get two more meters out of it. Actually, I'll get one more meter. We'll go to nine meters for a lobby, I think. And that should put this at 74 meters. 
So at, the, at this point, if we put another floor of commercial on here, we'll be at 110,000. Um, so that's pretty much our, our level um, to hit our, our frontage zone. So what we'll call this is, we'll call this our first level of residential in this case. That way we know where this begins. And at this point, really, we're just generating the rest of our form as a residential tower. So what we might do is just turn on one of our one of our planning controls so we can see the height that we're trying to work up to. So at this point, we're trying to deal with the last, the last 83 meters, 85 meters of our building in residential, um, but we want to put a bar on top as well. So we're just going to go, we'll say that the bar is about maybe six meters. So we'll just say what's 79 meters divided by 3,100 um, times 100, sorry, times 1,000. So I'm doing a little bit of feasibility work here, so that maybe this won't make sense. Um, but what I'm gonna do is generate 25 levels from here. But what I'm gonna do is just do one of them manually because I wanna change the names of my levels or make sure that they revert back to just standard naming. So we'll do 24 more levels of residential. So we're going to array to us, uh, we'll go 24 and we're going to array to our second level after this one at 3100. Okay, it looks like we actually have a few more available, so I'll just add a couple more of these. 35, 36. And at this point, I think that last level will be my bar. Okay, so the bar is only 4400, um, which could be a little bit low maybe, but for now we'll let that stay. Obviously there's plant floors and all sorts of other factors to consider, but for now we're really just doing a maximization to estimate, because we can apply a very broad brush estimate on this number that we get based on our experience. Okay, so at that point, now we just need to generate our mass floors. So I'll just go back to my full site controls for 1A. So the great thing about massing is it's really easy to generate mass floors from it. While you select your mass, just go mass floors and basically you pick all the levels that you want to create a floor through your mass at that point. So really easy actually. And all we do is we'll just say we want to go from ground floor up to the bar. We'll okay that and automatically we've just generated a set of mass floors. And the great thing about mass floors is that if you're at the bottom of a mass floor, but that mass floor is on the top of a form, such as the top of this podium, it won't generate a mass floor for the roof, only for the floors, because it knows logically that's not really where the floor is. So what it really does is it will generate the next mass floor for the smaller profile. So you'll see here that our next mass floor is actually our residential, even though it's flush to this lid. And likewise, um, you know, obviously we're not generating a mass floor for our roof. So it's quite a logical tool. I find it works really well. Okay, so we, we can actually generate a schedule of these mass floors as well. So I'll just make a mass and I'll expand this and I'll make a mass floor schedule. And we want to add floor area and level. And we'll just make level first. And we want to sort by level. We could sort by level elevation, but in this case we won't. Um, and that's pretty much it. We want to make sure that our floor area is going to calculate its total. And we'll put a grand total at the bottom as well. Okay, so this should generate us a mass floor schedule, but notice that we don't see anything. That's because we need to set our design option in our properties. So we'll go to the visibility graphic settings for the schedule and we'll say, show me option 1A, maximize. And there's our mass floors. And we can actually see at the moment that we have 94,000 square meters currently. So it's, it's a really big building if we build it all the way out. So we know we're gonna have to reduce these floors later on. But what we need to do now is estimate our facade surface ratio in a maximized form, unconverted to GFA. So at this point, we actually need to generate a formula, which is the site, uh, this divided by the site area, and then we total it to get the FSR. So how do we get the site area? Well, that, that's a hard, a hard one, actually. What you need to do is just select your property lines, and our site area is 3932 in this case. So what we need to do is actually create a parameter in our project for this. So we're gonna go to manage project parameters, and we'll add a parameter and we'll call this full site area because we actually need a parameter for our half site area as well separately because this is going to be a fixed value and we're going to associate this to our project information so it's stored in our project info as an area and what that will give you is a parameter that you can add to your schedules so if i go to my project information i'll just double check that area again i think 39 31 39 31 
always round down when you're dealing with site area. You don't want to add any numbers that you don't have. Okay, so we'll go 39, 31. And this becomes a number that you can use in a mass schedule. So what we'll do is just go back and where it says select available fields from mass floor, go to project information instead. And we should have our full site area. We'll go to formatting and we'll make that a hidden field. But what we're gonna do is generate a calculation. So we're gonna generate a formula and we'll call this our FSR or our facade surface ratio. And it's going to be a number and the formula is gonna call on some parameters. So if you click on those three dots, you can actually generate a formula. And it's going to be the floor area divided by the full site area. Cool. And if I okay that, you'll see that now we have FSR for each floor relative to the site. But what we need to do with that is we need to actually total that. So we're gonna to calculate totals for our FSR. So now we can see unconverted to GFA, our FSR is 24.12. So from here, um, being someone that understands how to do feasibility, you could make an assumption about your likely GFA target uh, from that number. So based on the program mix that you know you have and the likely efficiency of that program floor to convert from GBA to GFA, you may be able to estimate that say your, your FSR is going to be you know 14 or you may already have calculated your allowed fsr based on your your planning requirements and you know that you're going to have to be 40 percent more efficient with how you shrink the size of your building overall um, on average but essentially that's a basic massing study um, i actually have one that i've done with two options from earlier that i'll just open really quickly to show you a process i use to deal with the half site as well okay so got one here at the end um, that I just completed and I've got one massing study in my half site and I've got one massing study in my full site so I've generated two, two sets of mass floors for the half site option and the full site option but it's all based on the same building level distribution and then I've generated a mass floor schedule and I was being a little bit lazy and I've generated two formulas because what I've had to do is I've had to add another parameter to my project information called site area half. So what is my site area when I'm dealing with the half site option? So I can call on that number as well. And in my schedules, I've set one column for FSR full and one for FSR half. So what I can do now is just go in my, I can either go on my visibility graphic settings or I can just toggle my design option down here. So I can look at 1A and I know that when I'm looking at option one, I ignore this column because this is only relevant to a half site option. So here, I know that it's 24. And if I go to 1B, uh, sorry, 2A, which is my half site maximized, now I can look at that one and say, okay, half site I'm dealing with about 25.67 as my overall FSR unconverted maximized. So some of that may not make sense if you don't work in Sydney. Um, that's probably more for people I work with um, because they deal with this quite a lot. And I think this is the best workflow to at least find out your unconverted FSR in a massing study. Um, so that's pretty much all for today. Uh, quite an information rich and intense session. So hopefully some of you lasted out the session. Uh, the next one, we're gonna look at design options in a bit more detail. And we're gonna look at how to generate a building mass that's not necessarily maximized. It might have a few more techniques like a lofting uh, that takes a few profiles of the building and generates a more evocative form that we can target some GFA figures for. Okay, um, so that's all for today. And the next part, design options. So hopefully at least, you know, one or two of you made it through that long video. Um, hopefully some of them will get a bit faster as we get more information into our model. Um, so feel free to leave any comments or feedback down below about what you've watched. Again, it's quite a complex topic, so I don't expect everyone's going to understand it, but hopefully some of you did. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And thanks for watching today. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.